What's up guys, Wartekast here. What's up guys, Wartekast here, and today we have a review about the Denix K98. I'm going to show you some of its plus sides, some of its downsides, my personal opinion and experiences of these rifles and the company Danix altogether. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the features and what you can do with these types of things. And I'm also going to share a little bit of history about the actual Gewehr 98 and K98. Of which this thing is derived. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Because I am sweating my ass off. Now, just a quick disclaimer before we begin the actual video. This is a replica piece. This can in no way, shape or form be modified or made into an actual rifle. Because even if you did get it to the point that you could fit a full power service cartridge in there, they would just simply blow up in your hands. And you don't want that. Take it from me, these things are faker than fake. And the only thing that they're actually good for is decoration, filming or reenacting. So with that out of the way, let me give you a little bit of history and info about the actual K98K and the Gewehr 98. Okay, just to put it shortly, the K98 is basically an improved version of the old Gewehr 98. The Gewehr 98 being Germany's standard service rifle in World War I, these were however fairly large and heavy. The Gewehr 98 being around 125cm or 49 inches, um, and the K98 being 110cm or 43 inches, which in that in itself saves a considerable amount of space and weight. Um, after Germany's defeat in World War I, their military and armament power was severely limited. But to keep developing rifles for their troops, in 1924, Mauser Oberdorf started producing the Standard model, which is basically just a shortened version of the Gewehr 98 to the length that you see here. And these were meant for export, but they were naturally also sold in Germany. Um, by the time that Adolf Hitler took power in 1933, Deutsches Reichspost was using uh, modified Standard models with a turned down bolt handle, like you see on this K98, because the old Gewehr 98 had that bolt handle just sticking out horizontally like that. And they actually took the uh, Reichspost model, which is basically just this, as the same length as a standard model, but with a turned down bolt handle instead of a horizontally sticking out one, and they developed it further to create the, K the K98, or Karabiner 98, also referred to as Karabiner 98 Kurt or K98K. Um, so now that we got that out of the way, let me show you some historical features and flaws about the Denix K98. So, historically accurate, the German, well, the Denix K98, it's basically a mismatch. If you look into the details, you're gonna find a fair amount of flaws. So we're just gonna work our way from the front, add up to the back. To begin with, um, the front here suggests an early or pre-war K98. Why do I say this? Because there's no side hood on the side. Well, it doesn't come delivered with it, but it does have rails for them. Um, by the middle and the end of the war, K98s were standard with a fixed side hood. They also had um, a little cleaning rod here, but I sadly lost that, so my apologies for that. And it does come with the Denix 98. If you try to pull it out, however, it is just a, s a short spike about 15 centimeters long. So it does not serve any actual purpose. Um, the nose cap here also suggests an early or pre-war K98. With it being that it still has this fancy H-shaped weight reduction uh, part milled in with, so ooh la la. But by the middle of the war the Germans thought, well eh, you know, just basic piece here, one stamp, done. Okay? Now, moving up to the barrel band, you can see the seam here. Uh, well, that seam shouldn't be there. It should be a little notch, well, basically a notch going around there to suggest either that it is stamped or milled. Moving up, the sides are non-adjustable and I actually had to glue these in place because mine would keep falling off. Um, it is grooved, however, and there is a fair amount of detail going into it. Um, Action-wise, this is basically just identical to a normal well, actual real German K98. I am, however, a little bit disappointed to, to see that there are no um, stampings or markings up in the receiver here, because in my opinion that would have been a really nice detail. Um, 
at the magazine floor plate here, in the early or pre-war K98s there would have been a second screw here to basically prevent this first screw from falling out. Um, this also suggests that it is a later war K98. Uh, the firing pin disassembly uh, disc here also suggests that it is a later war K98 because this looks more stamped than milled. And basically what this was for was when you were disassembling the actual bolt from the K98, you could push the firing pin in here to relieve the spring pressure and then just take it apart. And now for the buttstock, this actually suggests a later war K98K. Um, this actually being an improvement to the earlier war versions, because the earlier war versions just had a little plate at the back here. Which doesn't do all that good of a job at protecting the actual buttstock against cracks and chips and stuff like that. So this is actually a very, well in my opinion, a very solid piece, which uh, I think is more sturdy than the rest of the rifle. And now that we're on that topic, the quality of these guns, well the Denix guns, isn't all that great. Because, you know, with a normal K98, if you want to cycle the action, this shouldn't happen. Oh no, look, my... Uh, this is because these are... Let's see if I can get it back in. These are not the best or highest quality parts that they use. Uh, the metal in here is, actu is actually an alloy uh, composed of zinc. To make it very weak so that it can be well basically modified to fire an actual cartridge which i get honestly that's actually very considerate of them to do i am i am however a little bit disappointed at the crudeness of this because you see seams everywhere and i actually had to sand a lot of them down on this one and i also treated the wood with a little bit of shoe polish and a black shoe scrub to make it look like this to make it look more realistic basically and also, I do not recommend cycling this too often, because then you get the same problems as me, and that is that your bolt will randomly fall out of your rifle. You can also disassemble this, and with the real k 98s you just needed to push this aside, open the bolt, put the trigger down, and then it can come out. That's also not the case with this one. You need to loosen this little screw here, and then you can take it out. So basically, quality-wise, these Denix 98s are okay. It's sad to see that there is no magazine. If I can open this, yeah, there is no magazine inside. There's not even a magazine floor plate or something, just solid wood. And these do not accept clips nor rounds. You can put a clip in there, but this is about the farthest that you can get. You can push it down a little, but then the rounds just fall into the wooden compartment. And it's very hard to get them out. As I'm demonstrating now. Um, and if you're wondering about the bayonet look, these do not fit actual original German bayonets, such as this one. Um, I don't know if they actually provide replica bayonets. I do know that they make them for the Denix M1 Grand, which also does not accept original bayonets, sadly. And you can't really modify, well, modify, send it down or file it down to make it fit because it's very brittle. And it won't bend, it will break. Trust me, these things break. Um, my personal opinion, if you have the money and the permits to buy an actual blank firing or functioning K98, um, just do that. These are good alternatives if you need them for certain scenes or reenactments where you know that original pieces will break or fail. Or if you're just a cheapskate like me. Because these are good for filming if you do the work and you sand it down a little bit and you make it look, the wood look a little bit darker and stuff like that. Um, but honestly, I wouldn't buy these again. I would just save up for a deactivated or for an original K98. However, if you want to use this for filming or decoration, that's all on you. That is perfectly possible. You just need to be a little bit careful with these things because they are fairly fragile. Um, this rifle has been through a lot. And I am actually surprised that it isn't falling apart at me right now. Because the safety functions, um, by the way, you can pull the, the firing pin back and put the safety around. Put it around and you can dry fire it. But that's about it. You can cycle the bolt if you're careful and this doesn't happen or you could just leave it for decoration 
I personally recommend that you don't use these for excessive reenacting because they aren't the most sturdy or reliable firearms, well, replica firearms. Um, but for decoration or background shots or just for simple displays and stuff, these are ideal because they don't cost that much. In Europe, they're ranging from around, I think, 120 to 160 euros. And I actually bought this for 130, I believe, five years ago at the Cine Militaria Fair, which I think is a fairly good deal. If you can get your hands on one of these for a reasonable price, they're worth the money. But don't expect original uh, milled components and stuff like that from an XK98 because they're just not that quality. I hope you guys enjoyed this short little informative video. I hope it was useful for you and if uh, I can help you in your purchase, just put it down in the comments and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. I hope you enjoy these types of videos. I'm gonna plan on making a little bit more of them because I do have some more Denix firearms. And I've also got a little bit of more uh, extra ideas for short films, but more of that in the future. I'm glad to be back. Watertech test here, over and out. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Taking this ammo bombs.